Hello everyone, welcome to my tutorials on how to build my reprogrammable 9-button multi-press combination lock. The Redstone Edition. Last time, I showed you how to build this 9-input segment with separate outputs from the inputs being that close together. This time, I am going to show you how to build using the items in my hotbar, the binary counter for the bottom left button segment. So I'm placing these two pieces of redstone so that I line up with putting a repeater directly underneath the yellow block here for my reset. I will be making a monostable circuit using a normal piston, whoops, that's supposed to be sand, and sand. And a piece of redstone goes there to take the signal out from the other side of the sand with a repeater going in those two directions off of that. Off of the repeater coming off the side of this line, I will put two stone blocks of redstone on top of them. And because of this monostable circuit shortening the pulse to one tick, this piston will push this block out when it gets a signal, and then retract, leaving the block out here. And the same goes for this part, or for this piston, which is actually going to be my output from this binary circuit which I'm going to make another exactly identical binary circuit right beside it. Now you see, if I wasn't going to do the optional, optional locking mechanism, I would not do any of this over here. This would be connected like that. That wouldn't be there, either would that. But... I am, I am doing the optional lockout system so that the button can only be pressed 0, 1, 2, or 3 times and, and still work. If it's pressed a fourth time, it locks out. Now, I have to go like this here. That is... No, that's not a problem. I have to go like this here. And then like this. Placing a torch on there and a torch on there. That and that. I cannot remember the name of this little circuit. <coughs> but basically what it does is when a signal is received here, this repeater has to lengthen the signal so it has to be at least at 2. I always put it to 4 just to be sure. And then I extend this line out here, however far it goes, I don't really know. And then, as you can see, when I press the button once, just as an example, these two pistons pushed out, these two did not. And when I do that again, go through the monocable circuit so quickly, these two retracted. And these two pushed out. And one more. Oh. They are all extended. And now, because of the fact that this is being powered, this will stay out all the time. But that doesn't mean anything. This is at where I'm retrieving the output signal from my circuit here. So I'll be placing a torch there and a torch there. That way when they push out, that redstone will take the signal onto whatever else I want to do. Now, my locking mechanism is complete and my binary counting segment is complete. So. Because of where I am, and I've got it to the point of locked, I might as well build the reset 
so that I can, well, reset it. All right, so the reset is just, you know, simply wired in. Redstone torch there, redstone torch there. And I'm just going to connect all this up here before I do any more work with it. And this has to go to right here. And I need to put redstone on top of this as well. And then I will put redstone up on top of all this to connect it so that now when I press... Oh, I forgot to do that. Here we go. Now when I press the reset button... No matter what state it's in, it will return to the sta a state of zero, unlocked. Now, to connect my, or to retrieve the signal from my binaries, and compare it so that I can actually reprogram what the password is. So I am going to create build myself an XNOR latch here, or an XNOR gate to do exactly that. Now, as you can see, the XNOR latch is turned on right now because this signal is off and this signal is off. As soon as they are both different, so I turn this on, now it is off. But if I simulate the piston pushing out, now it's on. If I turn this off and leave the piston pushed out, it's off. Have the piston retract, now it's on. So as long as the signal is the same, then, ah, sorry, I had an itchy back. But yeah, where was it? As long as the signal is the same, it will output, whoops, a signal. Okay. Okay, I have to make a slight change here. Not a big deal. This is too close to there, so I have to move it. See, that's a good thing to know. I didn't realize that that was the case. But now, let's do that again. Torchity. Redstone, 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 and this can carry out to. There we go. That'll work. Now, rebuild these. Come on. There we go. There we go. So, that just means I have to move this one more. Don't mind, though. There. Okay, now off of these, I must place a block in front of each line and a torch on the side of each block. Because what I'm making now is a NAND gate. That's N-A-N-D. Standing for not AND. Which does almost exactly the same thing as an AND gate, except it does the exact opposite. When an AND gate would be on, this one will be off. Okay, and now this redstone line here is the final output from this. 
actually, no, I should say this repeater here is the final output from this button segment. When it is on, then this line is on, and this, out, this output line is the one that connects to the door from the whole thing. So I am going to just do this here, which this lines up with the wall here. I'm going to put the door just right on the corner here. So let's connect all this redstone up. And don't worry if the redstone connects up to these. It doesn't matter because this is going under the wall, so I'm just going to place these to simulate the walls there. There we go. The wall would probably go to about there. And on this one, because we're going to be connecting it to a door, I need to place a redstone torch to invert the signal. So that when we get to the door here, it can open. Right now it's open because the combination is zero. If I go like this and set that there and set it to one for now. See, the door has closed. Now I come over here, press the button once, the door will open. Press the button twice, it's closed. Three times, stays closed. Four times, and I have now activated the lockout, which, as you can see, this torch right here will always keep power going. And even if I get, or if I send signal to this a hundred times, it will, this block is already being powered, so it's not going to change anything. So, my signal being zero, if I set, but I have found that if you do set it to the right combination, as you can see, that's at the right combination right now, and you press the reset, the door does open for a split second. Normally, it doesn't, but if it's on the right combination, even if it's gone past this, when you hit the reset button, the door will open. Once you have all nine of these connected, that will not happen. Anyways, if you found this video informative, or you'd like to see more of what I'm doing, feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, Thank you very much. Have a good one.